Welcome to episode 7 of Paranormal XL. I am Gigi, and with me until, like, forever is Mama Mary. This week just keeps getting better. Numbers going up, adding more to our paranormal crew, getting into investigations, which within the next episode or two, we will get more into that. So this week, we are continuing our discussion on spiritualism and its place in paranormal. It turned into a bigger episode than I ever imagined. Oh, you. definitely. Yes. It, it was crazy once we got talking about it. Um... I do believe we only made it through the first page of my notes anyway, and I have a bunch. <laughs> so, with that being said, let's talk paranormal. You want to yeah. start? or No, go ahead. I want to hear all about what you were talking about last week, about the paranormal and the spirituality. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember yesterday. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, should we touch back a little bit on what we did discuss I know we got into, like, what spiritualism is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we talked a lot about the the different dimensions and yes. where different spirit resides on different dimensions and how when we start to do our investigations, what dimensions we'll be connecting with and what we can encounter depending on the dimension. All right. <laughs> um, I do have, I need to stop saying um. I do know that. I say that a lot. So, um, (laughs) with that being said, so we'll get into, well, religious views. I just have a little clip on this. Spit clip. I'm not showing clips. Blurp. I got a blurp on this. I think that's what they call call it. Whatever the hell you want to call it. (laughs) Spiritualism was equated by some Christians with witchcraft. This 1865 broadsheet published in the United States also blamed spiritualism for causing the American American Civil War. That's what? Do you know what? Mama never, Mary's over here I've laughing. I've never heard that, but that's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But it doesn't make any sense. But I, I've noted, like, um, when it comes to witchcraft and such, it's just an easy out, like, people to blame that. Like, uh, it's what someone to replace their fear, so mm-hmm. to speak, versus, you know, it's We've a We've got to place blame, which is crazy to me now why would you blame a war on that that just sounds silly that's to me that's based on just well not human nature but human decisions escape voting yeah well yeah that was there was a need for change and it was created it's just like any generation Mm -hmm. it's just the way it is yeah that was weird um there's a another blurb here on declaration of principles have you ever heard this Mm -mm. no As an informal movement, spiritualism does not have a defined set of rules, but various spiritualist organizations within the USA have adopted variations on some or all of the Declaration of Principles, quote, unquote. Developed between 1899 and 1944 and revised as recently as 2004. In October 1899, a six-article Declaration of Principles, quote, unquote, was it adapted by the National Spiritualist Association, NSA. Why do I think NSA stood for something different? It kind of st- sounds like the, what is it, the gun group? That's the NRA. Uh, hmm. That's weird. It is kind of weird. <laughs> At a convention in Chicago, Illinois. That was a weird reading of a sentence, but an additional two principles were added by the NSA in October 1909 at a convention in Rochester, New York. Finally, in October 1944, a ninth principle was adapted by the National Spiritualist Association of Churches at a convention in St. Louis, Missouri. Hmm. In the UK, the main organization representing spiritualism is the Spiritualist National Union, SNU, whose teachings are based on the seven principles. I thought... Uh, I clearly don't have the principles in my notes. Well, that's I... really that's really interesting because it just goes to show that it doesn't really matter what path you take. It all leads to the same same end. Because right in front of me, I have the you know twelve you know 
universal laws okay. that people abide by in spirituality. So it's really interesting that you say that because that's what I was going to talk totally, about too. Oh my and, gosh. This but um, so but well. yeah, there's there's so many different principles, you know, towards universal law, just like anything. And I, anything has principles, any kind of religion, mm-hmm. you know, basis to stand by and the, you know, to walk with integrity and the highest esteem and the rules you should live by, so to speak. So just like the twelve commandments, your way of life. Yeah, maybe because mm-hmm. that's what a lot of like. Um, I know with witchcraft, Wiccan, whatever, it, it's a way of life. It is. The way that we choose, because each religion in general is a way of life, and then you sidestep of which religion you're going to go under, because even Wiccan is officially a religion. It is. It's, it's a certain type of religion. It's just different than what other people... But it's own. legally a religion. I I had this discussion with the fellows from our brother podcast, and they are like, what? And I said, yeah. It and is. in the court of the United States, Wiccan is... It's on paper as a religion, no different than Catholic, Baptist, what have you. It just, it's, it is what it is. Many religions would be surprised to see how similar things are done, mm-hmm. just in a different way, just in a different ritualistic way. It's still the same thing. So when they do a ritual, that's a prayer to them, just like when Catholics get on their hands and knees mm-hmm. and pray. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. It's just a different way of doing it. Yes. Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go through the laws? Yeah. Um, like the first one, the number one, you know, law is the law of divine oneness. The realization that we're all one and we're all connected. You know, part of our soul is here on earth in this vessel. The other part of our soul is uh, over the veil, the universal life force. The all that is, we are all connected. Every action has reaction. Then, um, then you have the law of vibration. And which means everything has energy. Everything has a vibration. The chairs we're sitting in have a certain vibration. The table we're sitting at has a certain vibration. Different people have different vibrations. They vibrate to a different energy. And that's why some people's energy that can walk into a room and you don't like them is because you can feel their energy. And some people can walk in and you feel good. It's all about the frequency. Then you have the third law, the law of correspondence, which is... um. The recognition that everything has a pattern and everything repeats itself through the universe. And you, if you pay attention, you look for the signs, you will see things in your life that constantly repeat. Maybe in a different way, but there's a pattern to it. It's like, um, it just, it's, everything's a circular motion. Everything swirls, so to speak, the energy does. And then you have the law of attraction where it's, you know, like attracts like. And that if you're positive, you're going to pull positive things towards you. If you, if you, you know, generate fear or pessimism, that's what you're going to right. bring towards you. You know, it's just like the idea if you wake up and you say you're going to have a bad day, you're probably going to have a bad day. You woke that's up the on law. the wrong side of the bed. That's the universal law of attraction. And then you have the universal law of inspired action, which means we, we manifest a reality and what we want in our life. So if you try to do a ritual... Or you try to pray and you try to create something, you ask God for something, you have to go out there and take action to receive it. God helps those who help themselves. Work for it. Exactly. Or say that, that's, you are the only person that can change the outcome of any situation that you're in. And I firmly believe that. I, I yeah. I'm living proof of some of that. <laughs> I, some I, of <laughs> I know that. I, I let some things get the better of me at some point, but I'm like, you know what? At some point when you're on rock bottom, you're like, I need to get my shit together. But essentially, yes, I can ask for guidance from the universe, from God, whoever you are asking it from. But you do, you have to take the actions in between, but yeah, know that they're there it, beside you, you to... helping you along the way. Yeah. It, it's, I want to say, they give you that, that support that maybe nobody else is giving you. I mean, that's All how I take it. you have to do is have it. the faith. Yeah. And that's the importance of religion in general is the universe, God's source, wants us to have faith. That's why it, it wants us to do paranormal research, to find mm-hmm. answers, to give us intrigue so that we can find the divine truth and know right. that, that it exists. And it's more than just one truth. It's a bunch of truths all mixed together. Then we have like um, the universal law. It's the sixth law of perpetual transmutation of energy, which basically states that everything around us is 
in constant flux. There's constant energy. It's constantly moving and constantly changing. And if you're able to, you can tap in and you can feel it. The you know, you can if you get good enough, you can walk into different rooms and tap into the different energies. You can tap into people and know exactly what they're thinking and they're feeling. I do it all the time. Right. Sometimes you learn to block it because you don't want to feel certain things. Mm -hmm. And that's um, learning learning that this does exist and that you can you can feel that change of energy at a cellular level will help you see how you can create and trigger positive change in any situation or protect yourself in any situation because you can sense the energy and know that you're in a danger zone, right? so to speak. You know, which is really important for like any kind of paranormal investigation is well, know yeah. when to get out. Yes. And then we have like um, the law, the seventh law of cause and effect, which is um, basically, the, you know, what it says. Every action has a reaction. So know that if you make somebody angry, they're going to get angry back at you. There's always, there, that's just the way it is. You're always going to get a corresponding reaction to something that you put out there. And then you have the, the eighth law of compensation, which basically sees, says you're going to receive what you put out. So, you know, if you're putting out something bad, eventually you're probably going to get something bad back in some shape or form. If you're putting out good, it comes back to you that way. It compensates. It's just the way it is. There has to be that balance of give and so take. So that kind of be like karma? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's exactly what it is. And, you know, you're remembering that there's a pattern and everything circles and everything, what goes around comes around. Eventually. Yes. Sometimes karma doesn't hit as fast as I know I would like. But, <laughs> but, but it, it'll hit somewhere. At some point, I'll take a chunk out of your ass. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I want good karma coming my way. I do know that. And then um, there's the, the, the law of relativity, which is um, it's all about the neutrality of things when seen in isolation. Sort of like, um, sort of like, let's say you think you're really poor until you go to New York City and you see people living on the streets. Mm -hmm. Then you mm -hmm. know, you realize you're not that poor. It might feel like it when you're isolated. Right. In your own little world, in your own little bubble. But when you expand your horizons and you open up to different possibilities, you see the bigger picture. Being able to see the bigger picture is what that law of relativity is all about. Is realizing it's just a singular thing. I am such a believer in that. <laughs> is I, because I, I've been asked, you know, how can you see the good in, in a certain situation? Let's say that some people would see it bad, and. Exactly what I say every time is I take myself out of that box. I put myself outside of that box. Mm -hmm. And okay. I, I know every situation's different, but that's exactly how I how I do it. Because people are like, how can you be happy all the time? I'm not necessarily happy. I'm considerate, but I'm not going to, just because I'm feeling bad, I'm not going to make other people. Yeah, 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 because it's easy to do, going back to those previous previous laws that you just read, it, it's uh, just because I may feel like I have bad energy that day, I'm not going to take that out with me. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, even if I'm faking it until I make it, but I don't want somebody else to take on my energy just because I am having a bad day. Well, it's all about perception, too. If you perceive that you're going to have a better day, it's going to get better. I remember I was having, like, a really bad day, not, like, negative wise but just bad stuff was happening yes. i'm like well it's not going to get any worse and every single time it did it was sort of like give and take I like not to you. say that out loud i don't say it ever <laughs> again i learned my lesson that day because then you have like the the tenth law of polarity which means that everything has an opposite like the yin and yang there has to be balance right and um i believe that for sure so it almost goes back to you know it can't get any worse well it was giving me that polarity giving me you know, it was giving me what I was asking for mm -hmm. and teaching me that, you know, it can unless you think in a positive way. Right. It gets better from here. It's only going to get better instead of it's mm -hmm. not going to get any worse because yeah. then it gives you that answer. Being positive is such a wonderful thing, even if you're BSing yourself. Because half the time I'm BSing myself. But, man, it can make a huge difference in the outcome of things that you do. Mm -hmm. It really can. It can. Yeah. <sighs> Because the universe hears what you're saying and it gives it back to you. And so, you know, 
if you're having a bad day and you really feel that, that's what the universe is going to give to you. Just like right. if you're going to send something out to the universe, but then you doubt it, it gives it right back to you because it doesn't know what to do with it. Right. You have faith. It's well, all about faith. like that gal all the time. She constantly, constantly asking me, how can you go into a certain situation with essentially a smile on your face? So why not? I can walk into a bad situation, but I'm the only one because it's bad in my eyes, I'm the only one that can flip that to make it a good situation. Mm -hmm. So when I'm walking out of this situation, it, it can well, be good. Besides the fact, when you allow people to um, get you down like that, then they have power over you. And your energy is too precious to give to other people. Right. Forget that. Right. You know, uh, that I used to do that. Then I, I started developing the same attitude you have only because, you know, I'm an energy worker. I'm a healer. And to give my energy to somebody for free when they didn't deserve to have that energy from me, it's not even worth it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll give anybody energy work for free, but only if they deserve it. Right. That's Giving away your energy, it's so easy to do. I'm, like, I'm not a complete believer, but I am, I guess, a personal believer. This is going to sound really strange. A personal believer of it on, on some aspects because of the fact that since I learning about this stuff and, and it's kind of opening my eyes on certain things like oh wow that that does relate to that you know with being around somebody negative and giving them your negative energy you know I I did that at my job for a long time and and I would leave so tired I'm like why am I so tired why am I nauseous it was making mm -hmm. me nauseous what is going on you know I even went to the doctors because I thought I was sick no that's not what it was it was Letting them the, take your energy. Yeah. I was just, oh my gosh, what is going on? It, it was not okay. Now, since I'm like, all right, let's see if this works, I go in, positive attitude every day. Yeah, I, I I talk to whoever at work in, in a positive way, and we turn it around. And it's mm -hmm. been great. And now, not that I look forward to going to work, because nobody looks forward to going to work. Yeah. But I don't dread it. Like, thinking of ways... To get to call in on my way to work, and I'm like, man, what can I say? What because I don't want to lie, but eh, I really don't want to be there because. And it wasn't. I need to make money. I got bills to pay, yeah. but I knew I was going to be so exhausted. I was like, man, is it worth it? And it really wasn't worth it because it was tearing me down, who I am as a person. Because then I started bringing it home, and I was having bad days mm -hmm. at work. So if you are dealing with somebody negative at work, turn it around. Put out that energy. Send them good. Quote energy. unquote. Kill them with kindness. Yeah. Essentially, that's what that means to me. I Not that you're killing them, but it changes that outlook for it you. Changes, it changes the, the law of the rhythm. It changes yeah. the vibration. of See, because it's all about vibration. So you're sending out a higher vibration that makes them raise to your vibration. Okay. Either that, or eventually they can't raise to your vibration, and they kind of pull away from you. Right. Because it doesn't match. Okay. Oh, you don't want to bring yourself down because then you're just matching their energy. It's sort of like, if, let's say, you're driving in a vehicle and somebody cuts you off and you scream and yell, shake your fist, and you flip them off. <laughs> every time. Why do you flip them off? But every time. <laughs> I guarantee the next time you end up doing that, you'll feel yourself exhausted because you just gave yes. them your energy. Yes. And you're going to feel like that for the rest of the day. Right. And you're really essentially getting mad for no reason. I got to tell myself that. There's a guy at work. He, we actually had this discussion at work that... He just will randomly get mad at things and start yelling at it and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, he's going to give himself a heart attack. And I'm like, is it worth that energy? And it's not. It's so not. Yeah, people have their days. You get mad. Or, you know, I've thrown tools at work. I'm not even going to lie. You know, I've cussed at the machine. But I do it once, and I step outside for a minute, and I'm like, okay, you need to go cool down a second. It's just a machine. It's just your job at 4 o'clock. You're clocked out. Who cares? Mm -hmm. You know, and I go back in there. Let's do this. It, it's not worth It's just not worth it. No. They can it, pay you enough. It sounds to me like he has stuck energy where he just needs some of that energy from a healer to be released. Because a lot of times energy rises guy, and it gets mama. stuck. He is a, a great guy. He actually helped me get in, into where I am. Perfect hours. Four 10-hour days. I got three-day weekends. Like, I waited three years to get in that place. And we worked together at a prior location mm -hmm. together. And he always told me, it was me and another kid. He's like, I'll always have your guys' back because your guys' work ethic is so good. And that always meant a lot. So I kept in contact with him. He's an older gentleman. He takes care of his young boy 
Uh, he's like in his 20s or whatever. Just, God, he's a single dad. Has been for ever and ever. Um, he's, he's got a boy with some disabilities that he mm -hmm. takes care of. He's like in his late 20s even, you know. But that guy worked so hard. He just deserves better. And I would see him get mad at things. And I'm like, man, I feel so bad because he is such... He's a great guy. And I know he's got a big heart. He's kind of like, like my work dad is what I call him. Yeah. But then he reminds me of dad when he starts like swearing and cussing. <laughs> and I'm like, man, just take a breather. It's okay. It, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Yes. Shrug it off. Move on. They don't pay you enough to get mad. Well, see, <laughs> that, that coincides with um, the love of law of rhythm, which is kind of a, the idea that I lack rhythm. I lack law 11. <laughs> Well, it, it, this one's all about the idea that things come in cycles. So even though you might be having a bad day, a bad week, or a bad hour, everything cycles and eventually it's going to be good again. So always keep in mind that when those kind of things are happening, that it's going to, everything's going to be okay. Right. That's, that's the law of rhythm. And then you have the, the final law, the law of gender, which is, it has nothing to do with like biological sex. It's all about that there are two major types of energy. There's female energy and there's male energy, and we each have a little bit of this energy. It just depends on which one is stronger okay. within you. And I think that's where like the transgender comes from. Is oh. you know not necessarily. I, I completely didn't accept how anybody wants to be. I, oh yeah. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as you, you have feel whole. To, to me, you have to accept it. Only because it's not hurting me. It is well, not hurting yeah, me for somebody everybody to deserves love somebody. To, or... Everybody deserves to be happy and to feed their soul. And I think this is where a lot of that comes into is you might be a man who feels more of your female energy and that's more prevalent for you. Yes. And it's the same with a female. It's just yes. that's where that law of gender comes in. It's really not about, you know, your sexual orientation or your... I guess what kind of package you carry around with you. It's it's all about which energy is more predominant in your body. You no, know, and it's so crazy to me that people get so bad out of shape about that because when you hear people the the people that are negative about it and they get all worked up. Man, is it worth your energy? Because you don't even know this person that you cross in the street or you heard about or that you yeah, see on T V. You don't even know them. Is it hurting you? Is it hurting you physically? No. No. Is it hurting you mentally? Maybe, but I don't know why. Because you're letting it. That's your choice. Just uh, it's a reflection on you. That yeah, I, I never thought of it that way though. Because some, you know, they refer to it back as you know we're born this way, we came out this way, and a lot of people that are transgender or whatever, they if they're born that way or that some people will be like it's a choice you can choose not to be that way well not if one of the one of those energies is higher than the other you can try to argue that but you're gonna run into depression you're mm -hmm. going to run into mm, it may even turn them into a bad person because they're trying to fight this what they feel is a demon and it's it's not a demon within it's just no, who they are it, it, it's a and mm, I'm so passionate about that. I, I'm not really for sure why, but I just am because I don't think it's fair for people to to just walk down the street and be able to judge somebody they don't know because they're not hurting you. Yeah. See, I'm get, see, I'm letting these people have my energy right now, and I should not be letting that happen. Um, but I am passionate about it, and it and it angers me. That's because everybody deserves to deserves to be a free soul so to speak, yeah. to, to live to their highest esteem, their life purpose. And if, if we continuously push people back down, they're never going to live their full potential and who they're right. supposed to be. Oh, who the hell am I to tell somebody they can't, you know, a female can't be in love with another female? Who, who gave me that right? <laughs> Nobody. Exactly. Yeah. And I ain't even going to claim to have that right. Like, no, just be happy. Mm -hmm. Be who you are. Right. You know, you have stories like um, in one of our other episodes about that woman coming into your shop. You know, <laughs> you I remember that, that. Story. Yep. <laughs> that was you so always will. Up. <laughs> but who is she to come in and judge you for that? Yeah. You could have turned around and done this, done the same thing to her. Like that doesn't make that any was sense up to that me. Day, like she was taking out, she took down all my information. She wanted me to, she wanted to know if 
what my definition of a psychic medium was and what if I thought that I was and that was just be like you got a cell phone down get the Google it machine Google it up it was so weird. it'll tell you what a psychic medium is there you go boom but in the end she's the one that stomped out mad because I told her I guarantee I pray more times in a day than you do mm -hmm. was the last time you prayed because I, I sat down right before I came here it's it's that oh I know Mama Mary the does unknown. it's you yes. know well, it's easier just to be like, nope, you're wrong, or you're going to hell. The people, you know, and the people who think they're better than you really are the closed-minded people, and I feel sorry for them, yes. and I pity them, because they're never going to completely embrace life. They're just going to resent you. Well, here's my thing. That you did. How are you going to tell somebody to go to hell, or they're going to hell, to somebody that doesn't even believe in hell? Exactly. Like, the only way... the. The only way to go is up. You're not going down to hell. Mm -mm. It the just, only hell it, is being reincarnated to earth and never learning your life lessons that you're supposed to. And being to, that so same cranky lady yeah. over and over and over again. Living in I misery. would not. Oh, man, that scares me. See, that's one of my biggest fears is if this is all true and that's how we do it, we get reincarnated into something else in our past. Or not our past. What am I looking for? Not our future life, but our... Your life our, purpose? Uh, well, our next step after oh, we after yes. we pass. You know, I don't want to be something or someone miserable. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a scary thought. Whether you believe it or not, that's a scary thought. Like, I don't want to be a miserable... Let's say I turn out to be a miserable old man in my next life. Like, yelling at all the kids and... Oh. No, because you've already <laughs> learned that lesson. I sure hope so. I think my lesson, if I had to say, if someone was like, I need to know your lesson for this life, and if I had to say it, I would say my personal life lesson in this life would be letting people I don't, tell me what to do, but I, I know there's a different terminology I should use for that, but people, or letting people take my energy, I know there's a different way of saying that but and I am learning oh man how, how to change I think I've grown even since this podcast that may sound silly to listeners but no as to I, I'm taking I'm putting my both feet down just not one and taking cautious steps I'm like okay you know what this is what I want I'm gonna go for it and I'm not gonna let anybody tell me different and it's taken me years to <laughs> to figure that out and I've had people step all over me. I've had people take advantage of me. I've oh man, it's been a road. Have I traveled the worst one? Nope. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I took myself out of the box and I was like, oh man, there's all these other people that have had it way worse and I am so fortunate to what I've ended up with. Oh, I even got teary eyed on the way here thinking about my wedding when I get to walk down the aisle and like we look at each other and everything's gonna be great. Like it just I get chills every time. So I'm like, man, I've worked hard. Me personally, I have worked hard to grow for this. Somebody else may look at my life. They didn't take every step with me and may say, well, she didn't, you know, travel that hard. Or there may be somebody on the other end of the spectrum saying, whoa, she, you know, she traveled, whoa, 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 you know, and look where she's at. To me, not, I didn't have the roughest road. I had a rough one, but I tried to learn all my lessons along the way and not repeat them. That's the most important thing. And that's how you know you keep you can you keep raising your vibration is not repeating those life lessons over and over and over again. Cause it's tiring. It is. I'm only 37 and I feel like I'm like 87 trying to walk around. I ain't a king. <laughs> Cause it does. It takes a toll physically on you. I I think. It, it does. It, it can totally. And that's where you see the people who live in depression or things like that because they're not learning those lessons. Just that's like I know so part sad. of my lesson is. You know, self love and self worth. Yes, maybe your, those your are the dad ones does I a really good, good job at helping me learn that lesson and showing me my worth because I've become a much stronger person while with him. Yes, I need to say this because my soon to be husband in a few months, which I'm super excited. Um, <laughs> he reminds me a lot of my father. That may sound funny to people, whatever. But then you remind me a lot of me, and we are both complete opposites of each other, but so are you and Dad. Yeah. And, we, we but are. man, does it fit, and he shows me in different ways that he cares. We don't even say I love you. It's I like you, but we know. We know what that means to each other. We are, we are okay with it. And 
that got me all woo. <laughs> but we're okay with it. And, oh, I, I just think that works, that our energies are different. But he shows me in ways that I've never been shown before. I think it's so that's a, how it's I a know. good opposite. It's sort of like yes. both bringing something to the table that the other needs. Like, you know, like your dad needed more of a, a sense of humor and knowing that you can joke about things yes. that are a little racy and a little weird. And, yeah. You know, okay, I'm a pervert. <laughs> That's why we get along. I, I love talking dirty, and I love telling dirty. I love it. And your dad was always kind of like what? conservative but when now, it came to that. See, Sean's you get the your same dad way. alone. Yeah, and mm -mm. I tell I don't I tell need to hear middle, this, but okay. I tell my middle girl all the time, "You're the one that chose to be the only child because you want to stay home all the time." Because she's like, "Oh my gosh, oh!" But she loves him to death. Yeah, but like, mm -hmm. but so it's sort of like that give and take of <coughs> each learning something. Yes. From somebody. It's important. Yes. It is, oh man, super important to find somebody like that. It may not even, I think, what do you think about soulmates? We're totally getting off track, but I don't even care. No, anymore. soulmates, soulmates for me are um, anybody you've signed a contract with. And it's not really getting off track. It's all about the spiritualism and spirituality. Is you know, let's say, like with my ex-husband, he was a soulmate. Because okay. we signed a, a contract for me to learn one of the hardest lessons I've ever learned, which was all, you know, about ab abuse and having someone tear you down and rip away your self-worth. And then you have, like, your your soulmates, they're your parents, people that are meant to be together in some shape or form, regardless of what it is, that's a soulmate. However, a twin flame, which I believe your dad and I are, and probably... A twin flame is sort of like two two souls that were one that were split apart. You're one of the same soul. Okay. And so, split apart. Sorry. Eventually, because this is my first time ever hearing this term, so I do have questions. Splitting apart, like they were like, separated. It, like it was one soul at, at one time in in one of the yes, lives. At, at and one then, point, it was one okay. soul that split apart. One opposite extreme. Think about what you just said. We're the exact opposite, but we're like the same. So yin and yang fell apart at one time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so and that's what a twin flame is. And it's a lot of times twin flames aren't really meant to actually be able to be together. But every once in a while in a lifetime, you get to be. And so, that's why everything kind of, even though it's polarity and it's the exact opposite of each other, it fits. Okay. So, so do they separate so they can learn? They each or they need to learn different lessons. And, and no, then, I would and have to research along. that a little bit more. I don't want to say something I don't know for sure. Right. I just know, you know, basically that it, it's um the twin flame is a soul that was once a whole soul, and it's like one of the greatest, it's one of the greatest relationships you'll ever experience. It's like, sort of like, what is that um, what's that movie where Tom Cruise says, "You complete me." It's just like that. Oh my gosh! What is Jimmy? Is it Jimmy, Jerry, Jerry, Jimmy McGuire. Yeah. Jerry McGuire. I love. I love the name Jimmy. <laughs> Our voices got super louder. That's okay. It was Jimmy, funny. Jeremy, something was... McGuire. Show me the money. That's yes, Jerry McGuire. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I never heard that term before. No, but it's a very. But um. I think a lot of people think of a soulmate as, oh, that's, that's the love of my life. No. No, that's what I was going to ask, because that's what I tell my daughter, is that your person. I refer to, I've, I've ran into a few people that I'm like, they're my person. And essentially, I, I believe what I'm meaning, because anyone that knows me knows sometimes I just ramble, which I'm sure <laughs> our, our listeners know okay. that by now. Um, <laughs> I essentially mean a soulmate, per se, to people that wouldn't know what I mean by when I say person, where, where you have that person that you, you can go six years without talking, but you pick up a phone and it's like you never skipped a beat. See, that's me and my, to me, that's my best friend and I. Man, we've had our ups and downs. Have we? I mean, we probably still will, but we've been friends for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. Like, but I can tell you that if she ever needed me and I ever needed her, because we've shown that to each other, even going three, four years without talking to each other. Dude, I need you to blah, blah, blah. I'll be right there. You know, and it was like we never skipped a beat. You know, I everybody in my family, whatever, has different feelings on that. But ultimately, 
she is my person, you know, but Sean's also my person, yeah. you know, and that's why I tell Destiny, her, her first quote unquote boyfriend in the middle school, Jared, great kid. His family was friends with me and my ex-husband. Like we would all hang out and have bonfires, cookouts and stuff. Great kid. They still talk from time to time. And that's the one person from her past and all the moving around schools and stuff that she still connected with. Yeah, and I said, Destiny, I said, you don't ever have to be with him. He can be your best friend just because he's a boy. Nobody said that he can't be your best friend. Don't listen to people. She's 17. Mm -hmm. Life is hard right now. (laughs) I would not want to be a 17-year-old for nothing these days. And I'm like, that's okay. Because you guys were kind of going through the same things at the same time, whether it be with family and he needed somebody to talk to. You were there and vice versa. Like, And, mm-hmm. you know, they're 700 miles apart right now. But they still, every few weeks, will connect. And I'm like, Destiny, that's okay. Because she'll be like, why is he contacting me? Or I, I feel like I should contact him. And I'm like, that's okay. That's To me, that's your person. No, it doesn't have to have a label. No, no, it don't. Just an energy. See, that's the thing with people. They want to label everything. Why can't you just let things be and see how it plays out? Because like, they see things as material versus energy. That's true. So when you see things as material, or you have to, if it, you know, you have to touch it, then it, you can't. It's harder to have that faith. Yeah. Than just going with the flow. Yeah, people definitely need um, something material in front of them because that's when it comes to the belief thing and what you believe in and stuff. It's um, that's why people I think are so judgmental because if some feel that if you can't touch it. Touch it or or see it. It's it's just not there. But how do you know? Mm-hmm. You know how do you know? That's why I say I'm a believer, but I'm also a non-believer because I I don't know. Well, that's good. What's going to be really exciting about doing our paranormal investigations is because we'll be we'll be able to actually go and experience that energy yes. to form our own opinion. Yes, but we're gonna have the scientific equipment. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have a Mama Mary. We got our crew of six, I do believe, <laughs> you know, to, to help out with everything that we need. Um, so we're going to go at it from all angles. That's what I want to do to make us different and stand out from the other investigators, even though I love watching, like, Ghost Hunters and, mm-hmm. and all that oh, yeah. stuff and um, seeing all the videos that people post and whatnot. It's great. But I, I want to go in, like, full depth on, like, okay, can we debunk this? Not necessarily, I don't, I I don't want to debunk things because I, I do want to be like, oh man. But we want to have the truth though. Yes, yes. And I want to give, we want to give a scientific explanation and a spiritual explanation. And that's, wow, we just totally wrapped, wrapped right back around to where we needed to be. Exactly. Which was, well, <laughs> spiritual is imperative. Paranormal. Oh, just like I said, it doesn't matter the path, it's all the same end. It's all, True. it's all connected. It's all one. It, oh man, it is, and I'm. We're still only on page two. <laughs> we okay, just start talking. Well, we do, and and I really hope that's why our listeners come back. Um, man, I just love all you guys, and yeah, tell your friends, tell your families, put it on. Like I don't know, it's coming summertime out. At least here where we are, some of the story. Uh, the urban legends one would be a great one to put on out by the fire when you're sitting out That'd there roasting s'mores and whatnot. Yeah. You know, we'll even do a couple episodes here and there where it's we're talking just straight up scary stories. Yeah, you know, those are always fun, and then we can kind of joke around about them, whatever. But um, let's get back on track. <clears throat> so the next thing I had was origins. So <laughs> tickle tickle. I really like that shirt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where'd you get it? I want one. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it at the Walmart. Wally World, yeah. Did you pay full price for it? Hell no, I did not. Oh, thank God! It's so it had yellow stickers. Yeah. <laughs> then you go to Myers, and then they got the yellow stickers and, or the orange ones. <sighs> Any? Oh wow. Sorry, we we're talking clothes. Shopping. <laughs> anyway. A bunch of okay. boo hags. <laughs> boo hag. <laughs> you knew that was coming, listeners. Come on. Okay, so back to origins. Spiritualism first appeared in the 1840s in the Burned Over District of upstate New York, where earlier religious movements, much as Millerism, which is funny, 
That's yeah. funny to me. And it's funny to you, but our listeners don't know. But it's funny. That's an inside joke. Millerism. <laughs> and Mormonism had... I really like... Sorry. I really like anything with the ism at the end. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like orgasm? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is an ism. It Who is doesn't ism. like that? I mean, that's essentially... Come on. It's a big ism. Yeah, ism. Sometimes they're big isms. Sometimes they're not. I <laughs> got track. Enough of the isms. Sorry. But really, ism. It's just a fun... Maryism. <laughs> Gigiism. Gypsyism. Ism. You just... Ism. I, I, I something know. about it. I don't know. Anyway. Any housing. Any... Any housing. <laughs> you can't even do that with ism. Ism. Any ism. Any ism. <laughs> any ism. Oh, oh, we need to focus. Oh, boy. Okay. Focus. Focus. <laughs> so, Mormonism had emerged during the Second Great Awakening. This region of New York State was an environment in which many thought direct communication with God or angels was possible and that God would not behave harshly. For example, that God would not condemn unbaptist infants to eternity in hell. That sounds horrible. Well, it does sound horrible because if you think about it, you know, when you think about Jesus, he's all about love. So how could you be all about love but condemn babies and children to hell because they weren't a certain religion? Right, they weren't baptized, but they can't just be like, hey, baptize me because I'm a baby. They, you know, yeah. they can't talk. It's just kind of an odd way of thinking. I think it's hypocritical. Send in the hate mail, whatever you want right now, but that is very, very hypocritical. That's why religion is such a touchy subject, and I will, we will probably never get into it on here because that yeah. would turn the whole podcast into just a religion podcast, and I'm not about that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we're all about being open-minded here. We'll talk about different religions because I, I think it's interesting what their beliefs are because each belief I, <laughs> each belief I believe has some part... Well, it is paranormal because paranormal is something that's scientifically unexplained. Mm -hmm. So we say God, we say Jesus, we say uh, goddess to the sun, um, the, God, Gaia, Gaia. Uh, I'm trying to think of, I, I can't right off hand, but all those people that we pray to or bow down to, we can't see them. There's nothing scientific stating that they are real mm -hmm. besides feeling. But even feeling, that's you, what science and feel, that just doesn't go together. It, it, I don't know. This is a hard. I almost think that science and feeling would go together in the sense where science measures energy. Yeah. Centrifugal motion and emotion is energy. And I do, I feel like um, it could be measured with the right experiment. That's just okay. my thought on it. You should think about an experiment. We should try it. Or if any of our listeners have an idea that we should try, let's try it. Um, yeah, I, that is just um, religion. I love religions. I really do. As much as I can probably sit here about it and have it take my energy. But at the same time, I find them each so interesting and so... Because there is so much paranormal. And what's crazy about that is these religious, quote-unquote, religious people that are so... Ah, you got to think my way. I, I don't know, because I'm going to end up going on a whole tangent of whatever, and it doesn't even matter. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> I, what did we end on? Hmm? What did we end on? The last thing we were talking about was talking about how the paranormal goes into spirituality. Like that. I think we were talking about um, the research you had done about people who do paranormal investigations based on spirituality and spiritualism. Oh, I, I do actually have find that. that fascinating. I don't. I'm trying to. What? <laughs> <laughs> we were on that because I did want to hit one other thing. I actually have like, I, I got a bunch of stuff here 
but I had it kind of lined up. Oh, oh my gosh. Were you, were you going to what you got? With the Archangels? Yeah, because of the fact that I've, I took up, I think, season 14 of Supernatural, and he played a huge part in that. And I'll, oh, my Dean. Well, I, I love Archangel Michael, actually. Like, when um, I sit down to do prayer and meditation, I will call my corners for protection, and I always call to Archangels yeah. for protection. And so Archangel Michael is one of them, and then um, Gabriel and Raphael and Azriel. I'm raising yeah. my hand for those of you that can't see, <laughs> which you, is everybody. You, you in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Um, Where's my ruler? No. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Ass. <laughs> Archangel Michael. Now is is he bad? No. No. He he is your your major protector. Sort of like, um, we'll put it this way. I remember one time at my shop, I was having like a, a psychic event and I had a special reader there and she was doing her last reading and I was just waiting for her to wrap that up. So I was looking through my shaman book and I, I'm never much of a, like a reader from front to back. I like okay. to just open up and see what I get because I feel like that's what I'm supposed to be reading. And it read in there, you know daggers that people can shoot you energetically when they're thinking bad thoughts about you or being negative. And I, for like, before that, like the three weeks up until that night, I had a huge pain in the middle of my back that no matter what I did, I, I couldn't get rid of. I, I tried to stretch it out, massage it out. It just wouldn't go away. And so I read in this book where you call upon our Archangel Michael to take his sort of truth and cut away any daggers that anybody's placed in your back. And so I tried that. Pain went away. It's, a, it's sort of like he's a healer and he's a protector. So if you need protection, call the Archangel Michael. Sort of like um, if I'm going to have a glass of wine, I call the Archangel Michael to remove any, any and all negative energies from my presence and any earthbound energies that would attach and do harm. Okay. And um, I'll even ask for protect, protection when I go to work to have, to have him surround me in a white shield of light and to protect me from anybody at work who would do me harm. That's what he's really good for. He is the ultimate protector. You need I there. always, I do need it there. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> but um, he is the ultimate. He's the warrior. Okay. You know his um. So you call you call to him for motivation and seeing clearly and being. No, I'm sorry. And seeing your self worth. Is it weird that when I think of him, I think of my brother Michael. With, with big wings. No, no, <laughs> no, not at all. Because I love my brother. Another one that I really like, Raphael is when I call to when I'm calling my corners, when I do my meditation. And um, he is, I also call to him when I do my healing and my energy work with people. I call to Jesus and Mother Mary and Archangel Raphael to come with me and to heal. And I do that because... He's a very powerful healer, and he heals with God's energy. Find it, I guess. Now, Archangel Gabriel, he's the, the messenger angel. He acts as the messenger of God. And that's why a lot of times I will call to him when I'm doing my meditations to bring me any messages that I need for spiritual growth. Because in my meditation, I constantly always write down what I get, and then I look up the spiritual meaning of. And um, you have Archangel Ariel. I call to him often. I even have like a, a necklace that I wear that JJ stole from me because he always steals my spiritual stuff. And he is um, he is like the lion or lioness of God. He protects the earth. And that's why I usually call to him for protection when I sit and I do. And he, he's great for like um, when you're going in a car ride. Okay. I carry... I will carry that pendant with me. Like there's sigils that you can get that represent each archangel, and I carry that pendant that. with me. Okay. This one above you, with the black obsidian for protection. That is weird. That's, <laughs> that's Archangel Michael. Maybe you can take a picture of that and show the How? listeners. Where'd but, you get that? Um, eBay. eBay. <laughs> really? Now, did did you cleanse it and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. Where you put yep. it? Okay. No, did I know anything about that? This I, is I do black my obsidian. research just because I. But I find that stuff so exciting. But yeah, that's Archangel Michael. And I carry those kind of things with me all the time. I, That's super pretty. They are pretty. But without a doubt, one. 
Our changes are real. You know, I didn't, like I said in the last, um, the last episode, I really didn't think too much of the archangels at all until I walked outside the house and I saw all those orbs coming at me. And that's when I started looking up colored orbs and realized they were archangels. And that's where that started my fascination. And that made me, gave me the realization that I was meant to work with the archangels in, in some shape or form. And um, I think everybody is, if they just have faith and believe. Angels want to help you, but they have to have you ask them first. That I they, all have, my they all have a different purpose. Just like ascended masters do. Like Jesus, he's an ascended master. And Mother Mary, she's an ascended master. And those ones come with me to um, <laughs> for healing. And that's where, you know, seeing those orbs made me realize that. Even when even when I do energy work, I have people all the time say, I could I kept on looking because I could have swore there was a bunch of hands on me. And I said, well... I don't put my hands on anybody. I said, but I right. do call to ascended masters, archangels, and spirit guides. Your your healing guide and my healing guide to help me heal. They're feeling their energy, not just mine. That that's that's the way it goes. You know, spirituality is all about connection and all being one, and healing and helping and embracing other people. Sorry, I'm eating a really good muffin. You're all right. You're okay. <laughs> Mm. That is so good. And it's like, yeah. you know, Mother Mary, she volunteered, you know, she was the Virgin Mary. She volunteered, you know, in her lifetime to bring Jesus into the world. And so she's also called Mother of the World. And that's a, that is a beautiful power. And for sure. A beautiful thing because Jesus was all about love and healing. Yes. And that's where Reiki comes from initially because... There was a monk who um, who created created Reiki, and his um, really his, a monk did. Yes, and his huh. students asked him, "Well, you can't be much of a healer. Can you heal like Jesus did by just touching people with your hands?" And well, that bothered him, and so he mm -hmm. went into the mountains. I don't know how uh, you know on a spiritual quest, and he sat mm -hmm. there for you know days on end meditating. And through that meditation, he would get certain symbols and certain ideas, and he would and that okay. which led him to the Reiki symbols and the master symbols of you know initiating the Reiki and healing. That's you know it's a fascinating idea, and I know it holds some truth. It's a fascinating story. That another is. Um, another archangel, one of my favorites that I I majorly work with through my meditation, and I've had him come to me and speak with me is Archangel Metatron. And um, Metatron. He was he was assigned Sorry. by he was assigned <laughs> by uh, you know Mother Father God to be in charge of um, all of creation, and he provides like um he provides information from the divine plan. So if you want, you want to know a spiritual truth, you meditate to him, and he'll he'll feed you spiritual truths if you're open to them. You know what I'm gonna ask, right? No, he doesn't. He doesn't shape shift the cars. I'm sorry. That's, I love Transformers. That just sounds like an awesome Transformer name. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Then oh, that's yeah. probably why they gave that name because he's like out of all the archangels, he is the ultimate. Really? Yes. So he's he's, a, he's like their leader. -ish. Well, he oversees all of all creation. Of them. So okay. right. That he he is it. And, you know, like I said in the last episode, Mike always calling me Mary Magdalene. She's another ascended master. Oh and she was, yeah. you know, basically the wife of Jesus. Wait a minute. Jesus had a wife? She did. She was also considered a prostitute that he healed. You so can't heal I prostitutes. Should, maybe I should be offended that Mike would call me that. Hmm. But that's not something you can heal. Yeah, not really. No. But, and yeah. I have personal... What do I say? Personal, not visions, but personal happenings in my life where people think that certain things can be healed because somebody's a certain way. That that just can't happen. Mm -hmm. Because you can't heal. Uh, you can't heal somebody's. Uh, how? What the heck kind of word do I want to say? You can't heal somebody's passions. Or like yeah, their, yeah, their me, behavior. Yeah, because healing means to me that something is wrong. Just because the way somebody believes something, whatever, doesn't mean 
that it needs to be healed because it doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong just because you don't think it's right. That's true. They, like, have, to get, they have to feel like it's wrong when I do yeah. something different. That would mean when you need healing. Anyway. And St. Germain, he's... He's amazing in itself. He's like the seventh ray of freedom and transmutation. Mm. And so he is, um, a lot of people call on St. Germain and they'll do a meditation called the purple flame. And that's like a purple flame of like just healing. It's uh, okay. St. Germain's twin flame is the Ascended Lady Master Portia. And well, St. Germain is the flames. Lord of the Violet Ray. The path of the alchemist transformation, which is goes back to a lot of Egyptian belief, is the alchemy, the the transformation, of being able to transform energy with your own energy, the transmutation. A lot of times too, uh, we'll get into this at different times. So when I do my meditations, I I will I call to the corners and I will call, I'll call you know I call to the transmutation of darkness into light. I call upon all spiritual planets and I call upon the transmutation of darkness into light because that's what transmutation is. It's turning something that's just mass into the light of energy. Creation. Transmutation. Okay. And we can get into other, we'll get into different times too. That transmutation is all about geometric shapes. So when you look at archangels, you're going to see them associated with some kind of geometric shape. I have, I have tarot cards I can show you where they're like, I could go on forever. I, I know. That's a, I wish that we lived closer together because of the fact that we could do more than one episode a week. Because I was thinking that on the way over here today, I was like, man, all the stuff that we could get into. Because it all leads back to paranormal because this is all stuff that we can't necessarily p prove, but it's all belief. But, man, we could just, it, it could be an everyday thing. Like when we do those prayers and we call upon the five spiritual forces of transmutation, but those are five geometric shapes that they're talking about. There's five different geometric shapes that create and manifest. Those geometric shapes are the main archangels. Interesting. The Metatron, he's the culmination of them all because wow. he has all of the geometric shapes right. into his um in his sign, in okay. his sigil. All of the all of those shapes are in his. There's so, so what you're saying story. is There's so much more to the story. I'm I'm very visual. So you know those little black things that you get as a kid and you and you gotta put like the heart in the heart, the the star in the star. So, essentially, he's that, that big block that you put all those other little shapes yes. in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Um, one of my good friends, Jody, she made me a board and, um, with Archangel Metatron. Of course, she asked me, you know, she's going to make this for me. And I told her, I want Metatron. She's like, of course, you'd have to be the hardest one. I'm like, well, yeah. So, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'll show it to you when we go yes. inside. But it's beautiful. I, I like to do my readings on it. But, okay. Um, because I really believe when I connect spiritually to anything, he's always there. He's shown me that he is. So I have faith in the messages that he gives. Complete faith. And I, I have huh. complete faith in where it leads me and the knowledge that it brings me. The, the culmination of all with the true purposes. You know, just like in numbers and numerology, they, they all mean something. All of it. it I'm just going to go on forever, so it probably should be your turn. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and so I think I'm only on page four of my notes, <laughs> and we are really in this thing. <laughs> so we need to wrap back around and get to where we need to be. So here's believers and skeptics on spiritualism. We'll see what I have here in my notes. In the years following the sensation that greeted the Fox sisters, demonstrations of medium, mediumship, mm, seances and automatic writing, for example, proved to be profitable venture as soon became popular forms of entertainment and spiritual... In the years following the sensation that greeted the Fox sisters, demonstrations of medium, mediumship... Seances and automatic writing, for example, proved to be a profitable, profitable venture and soon became popular forms of entertainment and spiritual... Okay, you're going to have to say that word. Catharsis? 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I put that in my notes and I can't even read it. The Fox sisters were to earn a living this way and others would follow their lead. Showmanship became an increasingly important part of spiritualism and the visible, audible, and tangible evidence of spirits escalated as mediums competed for paying audiences. As independent investigating and commissions repeatedly established, most notably the 1887 report of the Sabre Commission fraud was widespread and some of these cases were prosecuted in the courts. Despite numerous instances, instances of chikrini, the appeal of spiritualism was strong. Prominent in the ranks of its inheritance were those grieving the death of a loved one. Many families during the time of the American Civil War had seen their men go off and never return, and images of the battlefield produced through the new medium of photography demonstrated that their loved ones had not only died in overwhelmingly huge numbers, but horribly as well. One well-known case is that of... Ma Let's see... One well-known case is that of Mary Todd Lincoln, who, grieving the loss of her son, organized seances in the White House, which were attended by her husband, President Abraham Lincoln. The surge of the spiritualism during this time and later during World War I was a direct response to those massive battlefield casualties. I am totally going to research that more. That's fascinating. That, <sighs> And they say the White House is one of the hottest places. Really? Yep. Oh, yeah. well, we're going to have to put that on our venture list mm -hmm. for sure because I, I know I want to go to Salem. The problem with Salem is I don't want it to be just like a weekend trip. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want it to be something that we can really get into places and visit and um, and see and, and, and show well, our listeners I want to go things. see where um, Mary Bassett and Sarah Bassett were hung for yes. being witches. Yes. Oh, that'll be so interesting. It will. Oh! <laughs> It will be that there's just a ow, a crap ton of history there that something just draws me there and I do want to go there so bad. I've, I always have. So mm -hmm. when my brother went there, I was yeah. a little mad. I was like, why the hell are you going there? There's nothing there for you. Go back out to Vegas like you do every other time. And then he sends me pictures and he's like, oh, you would have loved it there. I know, he's yeah. such a jerk. Hey, I got these concert tickets, but I didn't get one for you. Oh, I'm taking pictures. Bat. <laughs> Bat. Sis is going to outdo you. Weezer. <laughs> So moving on, I wow, that is just really, I wow. In addition, the movement appealed to reformers who found that the spirits favored such causes du jour as abolition of slavery and equal rights for women. It also appealed to some who had a materialist orientation and rejected organized religion. In 1854, socialist Robert Owen was converted to spiritualism after sittings with the American media Maria B. Hayden. See, something is so weird with all the linkings of these names. Well, That's so weird. I find that fascinating only because maybe the more they opened up to spiritualism, the more they saw the bigger picture. And yes. That's, that's what changed slavery, and that's what changed the women's movement. Was, okay. Was that idea of expanding and having a bigger picture. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It, yeah, it opens up those doors of how it's supposed to be. Again, yeah, that's why I say you got to step out of the box, no matter what situation you're in. If it's a bad one, even a good one, take a minute to yourself. Step outside, go in the bathroom. What if and, I were to take tell a step you, back. like, the rule of the universe, there is no box. No box exists ever. Is what we make of it. I need the box because I need to step out of the box. <laughs> uh, I'll make you a damn box. <laughs> I got a box for you. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah, there's actually so much more on this. So if you want to get into more into the, because I really don't want to make this a. a <laughs> A third episode, we easily could because we keep rambling on, which is kind of what we do, and that's what makes <laughs> it fun. Um, just look up Believers and Skeptics of Spirituality in Paranormal. Um, y you'll find a lot of names and history, dates. Um, there's a lot of great information in there. 
it's such a learning experience. That's why I'm just sucking mm-hmm. all this up like I'm a sponge. And it's just, there's stuff about the un, un, bleh, unorganized movement even. And we'll skip ahead to evolution. So, I know evolution, that can take a, a lot of different turns too. But, spiritualists reacted with an uncertainty to the theories of evolution in the late 19th 19th and early 20th century. Broadly speaking, the concept of evolution fitted the spiritualist thought of the progressive development of humanity. At the same time, however, the belief in the animal origins and humanity threatened the foundation of the immortality of the spirit. For if humans had not been created by God, it was scarcely plausible that they would be specially endowed with, with spirits. This led to spiritualist embracing embracing spiritual evolution. You got any feelings on that? Well, I don't know. You know, when I think about that, I think um, I think we were put here, but like it makes me think: what if, what if we were put here by celestial beings, and the the cavemen they exist, evolution it exists, but it was a scientific experiment to see how they could evolve how could how like ah there's so many things that were built way back when how do they build them where do they have before they had tools what did they use to create all these magnificent you know spots what's the place in um i'm trying to think stonehenge oh yeah that's exactly the place i was thinking and when i've done research on that it's shown that stonehenge has like a high energy frequency to it like when you take something when you take um a reader there Mm -hmm. the energy is much higher there what if what What if we go there and find out the 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 beings that were there first had messages from celestial beings and how to build it like, it was created for a reason. I can't say Why? that you're wrong, and I can't say that you're right I, on your and theory. That, for me, I, that's I think like that's a great. Scient- that's a scientific idea where yes. we were put here. But what if it was by celestial beings as a scientific scientific experiment to see what would happen? And maybe right. when things get wiped out, it's because they changed their plan. Maybe what if in the next couple of years we're gonna start living in space because that's what we've always been intended. Are we to starting do. to get into conspiracy theories here? And aliens. Oh, yeah, we are gonna get into aliens, but conspiracy theories—that's a whole different podcast all by itself. I actually had this yeah. conversation with our brother podcast mm-hmm. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Which is why this podcast probably has a never-ending time because of the fact. Let alone that we can have one listener. I don't care. I'm still going to do it. I enjoy it. Well, it's fun to talk about it. Yes. And to explore the ideas. And I get to spend time with you once a week. I know minimal once a week. I'm going to come and see you. And we're going to have our normal conversations. But we get to bring other people in. And there's questions they may have. Well, what makes me think about that and the idea that we were placed here is because when I had um, by Bonnie Robinson... Great, great psychic medium, past life She's reader. Super nice. She did. She is super nice. She has like the <laughs> biggest heart. But when she did my um my past life reading, she draws out a timeline, and so she's like she she showed me because she you've been here from the very beginning. She goes, you weren't born here. You were placed here, and you've been here through through all the lifetimes, and you're here for a bigger purpose. Because I've only seen one other person. I've only read one other person who was like that. And I, I know him personally. He's the one I've talked about that can just shape shift anywhere. And I've watched him do it. I've, I've been healing and had him jump in and I could feel my energy rise because he was, he was jumping into that energy. Um, so that's what got me really thinking about being placed here. Maybe not everybody. Right. But I do believe in some shape or form, there's some certain people, people are that are here for a different place. Yes. Some people to... are here to teach. Okay. And... That to you, evolve. But you can make Evolution. sense of that. Maybe not scientifically, but you can make... I mean, I can make sense of that. Yes. Um, now, I do have a question for you. Maybe our listeners would think the same. It's kind of... Everything's off topic here. We just say we have a topic. But, we just pretend. <laughs> so you guys can be in our conversations. <laughs> now, being a healer and a reader, how does it feel to you to go to another 
healer reader and get a reading or a mm. healing? Sometimes it's difficult. There now, do you have to find that trust? There is a trust because I can feel, I can feel who I would want into my energy mm-hmm. because that is a big trust. When a, when a healer goes, when a how do I want to say this? When I'm working with energy, I'm literally going into your energy and I am shifting your energy. I am moving it to where it belongs. I'm taking out the negative energy. I'm placing it with healing energy and love and light. If, right. if that's a big trust factor when you know what it takes from somebody to allow them into your energy. Because I literally had healing sessions with people that did not do anything. It's because they just wanted my money. So yeah. I, I have yet actually, and there's a couple of people I can see myself allowing into my energy in that form. Um, but I do have a couple of readers that I will go to, like Marcy. I'll go to her for readings. Kristen, I'll go to her for readings. And I Bonnie. like her. I've only met Kristen once, but I remember her liking my style, and that really warmed my heart because I yes. do have my own style. She's, she's I really my spiritual like mom, I would call her. Okay, and, I, um, I guess she's that. a special woman. I, I yeah, yeah, I even get that feeling. Like, yeah, and Marcy, she's like my bubbly cheerleader sister. <laughs> Yay, how, rah, rah, how rah. Her to death. And uh, Bonnie, they're they're people I can trust, and maybe I can trust them because the things they tell me I know is true, and I know they're not feeding me a line. But as an energy worker, yes, it is hard to allow other people to work with my energy, only because okay. it's a big big trust factor. I always wondered that. I guess I I don't know why I've never asked you that even like way before now, but so I've always supported what what mm-hmm. you do. Yeah. Um did I find it odd? Uh-huh. Only because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've odd. never personally had a relationship with somebody that had a gift or whatever you call it. Um I, I've been to readers and stuff just for entertainment purposes. Mm-hmm. Did some of what she say really strike me? Yeah. And it did my cousin as well as we talked in the past yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, but I've, I've never, until I met you, I don't want to say a passion came out, but the the interest peaked, mm-hmm. I, I guess, only because my questions could be answered because I, I didn't feel stupid asking you, the you don't, stupid you don't questions. Feel weird. Yeah, because to me, I, I think... Sometimes when you say it out loud, it does sound weird, and people look at you weird. Yes. And so knowing that you have somebody that you could ask anything to because they're they're weird. Because <laughs> they're weirder okay. than me, and I'm pretty <laughs> weird. But knowing that you're not going to judge me for the strange questions, only because I do want to learn. I, I don't. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not my ignorance by any means. I truly want to learn and and understand why you feel the way that you do. Why you feel the way that you do and that goes for not even just you but any type of religion when I find out somebody's in a different religion that I don't know anything about man I got so many questions and they may think I'm so ignorant and stupid because I don't know but I'm not because I I wasn't brought up that way so not everybody knows everything about every religion because we're not when you're young and you're formed and you brought up in a religious family and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that no yeah everybody has their beliefs but you're focused on that one religion, which is great, which is fine. But don't think of somebody else as stupid just because we have a maybe off-the-wall question yeah. about your religion because we were raised a different religion. I don't know if I that made any sense at all. It does no, in my head. It does. But it, we're just not born with this knowledge. I I have a need for this knowledge. Like I, I want to learn about spiritualism and all of the other religions and thoughts and beliefs because not all of them are, I guess, technically religions, but beliefs. Mm-hmm. And and I, they're so interesting where they came from, the history, that the outcome, the, the ah, it's just there's so much. It, it's crazy, insane. And I think this may have to turn into another well, episode because there's still so much I want to get hit on. That's good information. Well, there's there's so many interesting things, especially when you um. When you, when you think about being able to see spirit in general, like when I saw the archangels and orbs, that's a lot of times how spirit shows themselves to okay. us. Okay. Mm-hmm. About orbs. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it's fascinating because sometimes you look at orbs and you you might associate that with something evil. Like my son, I remember um, videotaping him one day 
and he had when I when I look back at the video, yep. When I look back at the video, he was um, surrounded in orbs, and I tried to debunk him, and really? I realized that JJ, in his own little right, is a little bit of a medium, and so he has spirit I can see that. I can see constantly, that. constantly around him. And you were talking about earlier about Rich, who had um he had yes. reached out to you about having his granddaughter with orbs around her all the time and you showed me that picture, picture yes. beautiful little girl oh Rich, she's a doll she's beautiful i yes. want to squeeze her little cheeks yes she's so she cute. is a doll but um and i do see the orb and the energy that i get from it really is um sort of like a guardian angel and i want to ask if it was on the left side or the right side i feel like it's a passed over like grandfather figure in some shape or form but there's nothing to worry about she is a spiritual creature and especially when um when you're babies we're the closest to our soul source as possible because we just came from across the veil that's when we're the most spiritually open so you're going to see tons of angels and guides and spirit in general around her and the fact that you see the orbs just shows how spiritual you guys are so i wouldn't worry about it i kind of get a feeling that it's um like a grandfatherly figure i want to i want you to let me know if it's on the left side or right side because right side for me is female left side is always a male and kind of take into account where you're seeing that energy when um when my son was a baby he used to sit up in the corner all the time he would just he would sit there and he would stare in the corner and he would talk and i knew he was talking to spirit and that's the way it's supposed to be that's the way we're supposed to stay our whole whole lives we are just conditioned as we get older to pull away from i mean she's so sad to think about exactly that being pulled away from the truth because babies and children maybe not even just babies toddlers children just in general, their innocence. And in today's world, their innocence is getting taken away sooner and sooner. Mm -hmm. And that crushes my soul. Like, it's nobody's business. And I, I wish they could hang on to that more. Now, I do believe... See, I pick and choose what I believe. Call me a hypocrite. Call me what you will. That's okay. I do believe that children and animals see things that, that us as adults don't because... We're so busy in our everyday life, work, taking care of our family, mm -hmm. raising our children, you know, taking care of our significant other, all those worries, all those stresses in a normal day life, they take our energy and our time away to be able to take a step back and see those things that are actually there. Mm -hmm. and they are there. And, you know, children, they're the closest to God's source. They're... They're so, they're so much more powerful than they even realize. Just, and just love them, babies. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> and allow, allow them to embrace that. Like, mm -hmm. I still encourage, encourage my kids to embrace the spirituality part, and to embrace that there is spirit around. And I, I teach them that it's not always something to be scared of. JJ right. will always come to me with little stories, of weird little things, and then he like um. Like, I remember him telling me a story about how he he was having a bad dream that I think it was Ch Chucky, the, the doll Chucky. In his dream, Michael. he was coming to play with him, but he was scaring him. And I said, well, I said, what you need to do is tell him that if he wants to come play, that's fine. But he's not allowed to do things that scare you. And he's like, you know what? He goes, I did that. And I fell back asleep, and he came back, and he was just playing. That's because spirit has to listen to you. So okay. spirit was coming to him. A child, you know, energy was coming to him wanting to play, but he wasn't playing in the right way, and it was scaring him. But once he stated that rule, he stated yeah. that law, that stipulation, if you want to be here in my energy, this is what you have to do, they have to follow that law. Right. And See, that's exactly what I told the gentleman at work. He asked me about spirits and stuff when he found out I was doing this podcast and was asking me questions and that's what I told him because I, I learned that from you in research um, I said you need to tell the spirit he he's he's a skeptic mm -hmm. um, but he also kind of believes I believe <laughs> um, because that's why he came to me and he knows I wasn't going to judge him for well, yeah. thinking that there is something there Um and, and it's his dog that sees this. I said, speak to it. Tell it that 
it can live here, but it is not allowed to scare you. It has to listen to you. Well, yeah, like all the spirits in my house know that if I'm getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go pee, you better not be scaring me. That's against my rules. Right, right. Because I don't want to pee my pants. Right, exactly. That would not be good. <laughs> but back to this rich thing, his daughter just wanted to make sure that she... That her daughter was not in any harm. Oh, and Rich nope. wanted to make sure his grandbaby wasn't in any not harm. Not at all. She's and that's just what I told garden. her that generally they're not harmful, that they are, there's different colored orbs. I do know that from mm-hmm. my research. Um, that they each mean something different, but none none of them will harm you per se. They're just, a, a the, the ones with the different colors, they are warning you in some aspects to be careful, cautious. I mm-hmm. guess, and correct me if I'm wrong on this. No, it makes w- sense. With the colorings and stuff, that, that's what they're sent there to show you. Kind of like, uh, to me, I think of it as like a traffic light. Red, don't mm-hmm. go. You know, there's certain colors that yeah. we relate back to things. So if you see a certain colored orb in a picture or if you actually see it, look up the meaning of that color, and then you'll have your answer. A good way to see to um, look at an orb if it's a, a real orb, a lot of times you'll see, like, um, some kind of face in it, some shape or form. Really? In that orb, you'll see maybe eyes or a smile, like a smiley face type thing. You'll see mm-hmm. some kind of shape to it. An emoji. You know, that's how you kind of tell the difference between a dust particle and an orb. Okay. a lot of it is going to be dust particles. I'm not going to lie. That, that's the reality of it. It's, yeah, yes. Most people, you can debunk an orb sighting or an orb in a picture you you can debunk it but as a believer not believer i'm gonna call myself a gray person that's why i'm gonna start referring myself the gray area yeah the gray zone yeah i'm in the gray zone as as i do believe that there are some out there why they only show themselves to some people i don't know i would like to believe that it's because those people are more in tune with their spiritual side and that's why they can they feel and they can feed off your energy to be able to show you them Mm -hmm. Um, because the non-believers they they carry I believe more of a a, I don't want to say negative energy but a negative energy toward that subject yes and a lot of that isn't even by choice again that goes back to being so busy with life in general that you don't even touch that other base of quote unquote reality Mm -hmm. that other reality alternate reality that is supposedly out there take that time meditate something as easy as meditating taking that five minutes whatever even if you don't have a vision if that's what you're after whatever <laughs> that relaxing time holy cow does it feel good it does make a difference <laughs> it'll make you you feel i feel real I'm re-energized after five last night i did it after work i've had a long week of work my butt off so i didn't have to work tomorrow I took 10 minutes outside, but the sun was shining. I just sat there with my eyes closed in my chair, had my headphones in, listening to the nice, easy music. Mm-hmm. Just calm. Got the chills, but it relaxed me when the chills like went away, when they like mm-hmm. descended. I was like, oh, man, that is a great feeling. It Take is. that five minutes. Relax from your everyday life. That's that's just something that everybody needs to do, whether you're they do. a bad person, a good person, and an okay person, mediocre, I, whatever you see yourself as, take that time. You need that time for yourself. I'm not saying you're going to have a vision if you take that time because a lot of people won't take that time because they're scared. Yeah. <laughs> but take that time. Relax, everybody. Life is okay. Um, Yeah, there was still a bunch more that we didn't hit. But on the orbs thing, I do want to have an episode on orbs and probably a few other things as mm-hmm. far as the spiritual world goes. Um. But you want to let his daughter know that you yeah. that you don't think that she's I in any danger or anybody else that picture. has. And I, I really feel like it's um, that one in general is a grandfatherly figure. And, you know, take an account, too. Is she scared when she's sitting there? Is she plain? Is she happy? You know, take, take the whole energy into account. Her, her energy yes. is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Her well, reaction to how it. How she's feeling. Because <laughs> it's not to sound mean, but she's probably more spiritual and wise than we all are. Yeah, well, to be yeah, honest. But like you said yeah. about the babies and the little ones being closer to that. I mean, <sighs> they're definitely closer to the baby yes. because they were just born. Yes. yes. They have the, the precious memory things. of what the other side is like. 
Makes sense. And here we are just living in the middle, and we lost it until mm -hmm. we get back to the end, and then we get to see it again. Yeah. Essentially. that That's how I feel spirituality, bleh, spirituality is. It's okay at the beginning, so we're closest to the veil, we're babies, then we start learning life responsibilities, work, bleh, all that fun stuff, or being an adult. We lose that sight because we're mm -hmm. busy on that other stuff, and then we start living our golden years, per se, retirement. We can start relaxing again, and then when we're about ready to cross over, then we start seeing that stuff again. Because I remember my grandmother saying random things or just being at peace. She looked yeah, just she so would, at peace. She would tell me. She would tell me who was there. And then I would just say, yeah, she, yeah they are there. Because mm -hmm. she was confused at first. And then I'd say, no, yep, no fear of uh -huh. seeing them. They're, they're here. Yep. It's because that's yes. how it works. They come right. back. You know, your loved ones come back for you to cross you sure. over. Yes. And I think, oh, grandma. I'm making a mess, and I'm sorry. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, okay, so we are going to be wrapping this up, I promise. Um, <laughs> we have a hometown heroes segment, of course, that we just started. So <clears throat> with that being said, make sure to write in your stories, no matter where you live, what it is, even if it's a dream. The, the, you, I said horrors, you just, right? You said heroes again. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I have to go potty. <laughs> Hometown horrors segment, but I, I don't, everybody's just a hero. I just, I love heroes. I love superheroes. Uh, Thor, <laughs> as everybody Thor. knows. Oh, shit. Anyhow, even when he was chubby, when he came back in the last movie, it, it's okay. Um. Anyway, hometown <laughs> horrors. Okay, Charlene wrote in and said, I saw my first ghost at the age of five. We lived in a house in Detroit, and I found out after we moved to the suburbs that a woman was murdered there. But that's all she kind of wrote in. She didn't write in a whole lot of stuff there, but... I'd be interested to hear, hear other stories from her along with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because I, I'm pretty Maybe sure if she thinks about it, it, there's some really cool stories go along with that. Oh, I'm sure. Um, Tanya wrote in and said, Had an encounter while I was at a friend's house. It was late. I was headed back to bed after using the bathroom. When three half-figured body entities came out of the wall and crossed the room and entered into another room, I froze, and then they then screamed bloody murder until the entire house awoke. It, it took 30 years to talk about, but now I investigate the unexplained. That's exactly it. You, as soon as you let go of that fear, then you want you want the answers for it. Yes. It's, yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that, because I think fear holds us back from a whole lot. Um, I, I don't know. I can't even explain why I feel the way I do. <laughs> but fear does. It, it's held me back from a lot of things. Uh, I think that's great, and Tanya needs to keep doing what she's doing. And, and mm -hmm. You know, even if you don't get the answers, just learning more itself, maybe not coming to the answer that you want, because a lot of people will, I believe, quit investigating or quit researching because they're not getting the answer that they want. And that's not always, yeah. that's not always going to happen. Do we get do we get the the working wage that we want? No, no. but do we still go? Yup. You know, it just um, educating yourself on this right. stuff is is all I can say. I think that's the best way to do it. Okay, well, can't wait until next week. <laughs> and remember, don't yuck someone else's yum ever. <laughs> oh, don't forget to give us reviews on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or anywhere you can find us. We really want some reviews, even if they're bad. Give us something. Tell can, us why you think. Even it's if you bad. want to see we're batshit crazy, that's okay. That, that is, we can handle that. We came to terms with that. We know we are. Now <laughs> we're just embracing just it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking it in steps and strides. Is what we're doing. Yeah, and we I'll, embrace. Yeah, you, you have to. We embrace our batshit crazy. Because mm -hmm. you want to know what? I, I've let go of so much stress, and I'm ha I walk around with a smile. I At don't least even care. we're interesting. Yeah, that's true. Somewhat funny on occasion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah. also, feel free to email us with any questions or ideas you may have. ParanormalXL at writeme.com. You can now also get your own Paranormal XL Crew shirts. Go to our Facebook page. There's a link in there. A different way to do the shirts if you are interested in a shirt. But for now, you can go there Get into the link through our Facebook, just Paranormal, capital P, 
capital X, capital L. You'll find us on Facebook. Um, we have a link on the Facebook page, like I said, and the web page. I, I put a link on the web page. Um, thank you all for listening and catch you next week. Yeah, talk to you next week. Yeah.